focus. You may have to do what I did, just uh, lift front and back and place jack stands under the control arms and under the rear axle to have more room underneath. So obviously, clean pan, and if you have one of these, that's your best bet. Otherwise, that job's going to get messy real quick. That should catch all the fluid when you remove the transmission pan instead of getting it all over the floor. Alright, simple trick learned by experience to minimize the mess. Loosen the front bolts first and start removing the remaining bolts starting from the back, you know, do the and then go around it. What that's going to do is as you remove the bolts the pan is going to tilt and it, the fluid is going to start coming out because there's going to be more than just the level of the pan and it's going to allow you to let that fluid out slowly instead of you trying to remove the pan all at once and make and splashing that stuff all over the place so simple trick but it's going to keep your shop a lot cleaner and remember you're responsible for your own safety so if you don't want fluid on your hands wear gloves and if you don't want dirt on your eyes just make sure you wear safety glasses but at the end of the day it's all up to you be able to hold it with your hand remove the remaining two bolts all right so now just slowly set the pan down finish draining it And obviously leave the pan under the transmission because it's going to keep dripping for a while. And set this thing somewhere else. Clean it. Okay, so now that the pan is removed, you can see the solenoid assembly right there. Now, looking at it from the other side, you can see the wires come to the other side right here. And the screw that holds the connector is up there. Now to be able to access that screw, you have to unbolt the accumulator housing. You know, it has this bolt I'll show you in a second. To be able to detach that screw from the electrical connector. And which it comes all the way out right there. That's the connector. It's pretty dirty. So when you unplug it, make sure you wipe around it because this assembly is going to come off from here from an, from inside the transmission you're going to be pulling it down so you want to minimize the amount of dirt that's going to enter your transmission so you got to clean this stuff really good remove the screws to hold the filter using a T25 Torx bit
before you start unbolting anything, note the routing of the wires. You know, just, just pay attention how they're routed. That way you can route them back in the same spot. Otherwise, if you pinch them, you're going to short them out. So pay close attention. Now remove the pressure solenoid retaining screws using the same T25 Torx bit that you use to remove the transmission filter one. I'm just going to let the old one hang since I'm replacing him. Remove the accumulator housing retaining bolts and they all take the same T25 Torx bit so it makes it easy I have to have a bunch of different sizes but make sure you keep them organized and don't mix the, the screws Now there's a spring right there, okay, that you're gonna have to push on push in gently as you try to pull the uh, housing down. Otherwise you're gonna damage the spring. So there's the spring I'm talking about right there. Pull it out, probably the best at this point. And let's finish prying this out. There it is. There's the, uh, there's the screw right there that holds the connector. Here's the accumulator housing with the solenoid assembly still attached to it. And here's the new one and there's the new filter with the gasket so next step is obviously to detach the connector from the accumulator housing bolt a new one on and when you bolt a new one on uh, before you install it on the vehicle lubricate the seals with with new transmission fluid this will keep you from damaging them when you slide it up so you're gonna have to carefully you know hold one with one hand um, as you guide this in place, put a couple screws and then don't have to tighten them up. Put this in its place and put a couple of screws. Then once, the, once both of them are in their locations, then you can go ahead and finish tightening all the bolts. Make sure that you have a new gasket on the solenoid assembly. This one is a smooth surface, doesn't need a gasket, but make sure you clean it. After those parts are installed, install the new filter, clean the pan, and install it back with a new gasket. Make sure all the screws on all of these components are tight. Here's how it looks with everything installed, including the brand new filter. And of course, don't forget to connect the plug back on. Okay. It's the brand new solenoid assembly. Make sure you wipe the mounting surface with a clean shop towel before installing the pan with a brand new gasket. Make sure you clean the magnet really good. That traps all the metal. I put a drain plug on it. Next time it will be easier to drain the fluid. You don't have to but I just put one on just because. It's easier to install the gasket if you drive a few bolts on. You know, here, here. Keeps the gasket from moving when you're putting your oil pan out. Put it on your transmission, 
finger, you know, tighten them finger tight, finish installing the rest, and then tighten all the bolts up. Once you're done installing everything back on, remove your diff stick, place a funnel inside the diff stick tube, and add four quarts first of transmission fluid. So once you're done adding the four quarts of transmission fluid, start the engine and make sure there are no leaks. If there are no leaks, remove the funnel and with the engine running, check the level on the diff stick and make sure it's in between the minimum and maximum. Once you add enough fluid to get it to that level in between the minimum and maximum, you can take it for the short drive, come back and once the engine is warm, then you can make sure that it's on the full mark. The fluid level is what it should be. It's time to clear the code. Key needs to be on, obviously. Engine doesn't need to be running. So clear codes. All right, codes are clear. I'm gonna take it for the test drive, and the problem should be fixed. Transmission should shift correctly. No check engine light. Let's see how it shifts. A second. Third. No check engine light, shifts good. You know, when the solenoid was malfunctioning, sometimes it wouldn't want to go into overdrive. Let's see if we, uh, let's see if it downshifts. Yeah, downshifts good, even at higher speeds. Let's see. Awesome. Drops fixed. No more shifting problems. There you go. Now you know how to replace a defective pressure solenoid on your 1995 Dodge 1500 two-wheel drive. This restores the shifting pattern of the transmission back to normal. This will also prevent future damage to the transmission in case there is too much slippage due to low pressure in the system. Make sure you subscribe to our channel. We upload new videos every week. Also, don't forget to visit our online store. We have a great selection of accessories for cars, trucks, and SUVs. See you next time.